Hey YouTube. Well, here it is. It's been 22 days since the Japan nuclear crisis has started, and there's no end in sight for the radiation. The radiation in Japan is quite a serious deal, and it just amazes me how many Americans and people around the world who have already disregarded the information thinking that it's just not that big of a deal. If you look at what's going on, the radiation has gotten into the tap water, it's gotten into the soil, and now it's gotten into the Pacific Ocean in great quantities as well. They finally got to the point where they're testing the Pacific Ocean and they're realizing that the, the radiation is much more severe than what they had anticipated. What kills me is how many Americans have just disregarded all the information and gone back to living their everyday lives like as if this is no big deal. It's kind of funny because, in a way, the Japan nuclear crisis could be compared to the Bikini Island crisis. For those, for those of you who don't know what Bikini Island is, watch the following documentary. I just find it amazing that some people think by entombing the reactors it's going to stop the radiation, but in proximity to the Pacific Ocean, there's no guarantee entombing the re reactors is going to stop anything because the radiation could easily seep through the ground into the ocean and then still travel the world. Some of you think that that's impossible because of the weight of the radiation, but it's not impossible considering it's going to get into the sea animals and then passed on to other sea animals. I mean, the radiation is already in our livestock on the western coast of the United States. I can only imagine what's happening in Canada, Alaska, and Mexico as well. This is a very serious situation. They need to find a resolution to this very soon. I really don't know what to say, except in my opinion, I think that Japan might become another bikini island. And if it does, it's going to be a world-changing event. The Bikini Atomic Experiments were a series of nuclear and thermonuclear tests conducted on Bikini Alto in the Bikini Island. The experiments were part of the United States' research into the full effects of the atomic bomb, including post-detonation radioactive fallout. The first tests were conducted under the name Operation Crossroad. During World War II, Bikini Alta was home to a small Japanese radar installation. In 1945, the last year of fighting, the U.S. landed a small force to secure the site. The battle was brief and had no strategic significance. As the war ended, the United States decided that Bikini Alta would be suitable for nuclear detonation tests. And shortly before Christmas 1945, it was selected to be the site of the world's fourth and fifth atomic bomb detonations. Footnote That the first atomic bomb was detonated at the Trinity site in New Mexico, and the second and third bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. End note. But before the bombs could be tested, the government first had to find a home for the displaced natives on Bikini Island. The U.S. government promised the natives that they would have their island back in a couple of months. To prepare the island for the Alto and the testing, the United States Naval Construction Battalion, better known as Seabees, was flown in to help establish a credible base on the island. Several derelict tanks, bulldozers, and other military machinery were placed on the island to test the ability of such vehicles to withstand nuclear attacks. The Air Force that left 150 airplanes on the island's airstrip for testing purposes as well. In addition to the military equipment, the United States moved 250 naval vessels to the Alto, including the Pennsylvania, New York, Arkansas, Nevada, Saratoga, Independence, and the Japanese battleship Nagato, and a German cruiser called the Prince Eugen. To test the durability of ships to withstand a nuclear impact, 
Lamb animals were also purchased and placed on several ships that would later be tested for radiation poisoning. Back in the United States, the general public grew worried over the planning testing. Some people worried that the bomb's power would be felt way back in the United States. Others believed the bomb would create a hole in the earth. To help ease these fears, the Naval created several information packets and began broadcasting over Radio Bikini in an effort to calm the public's fears and rally support for the tests. During the final preparation, the, depla the displaced islanders began to protest their move. However, they were unsuccessful in preventing the shot. The first atomic bomb to be detonated at Bikini Island was codenamed Abel, a bomb similar to the most respects to the Fat Man, which was dropped on Nagasaki. The B-29 designated to drop the Able was named Dave's Dream on July 1st, 1946. At about 8.45 a.m., the first peacetime detonation of a nuclear ordinance occurred. Of the animals left on board the ships at the anchor in Bikini Lagoon, approximately 10% died instantly. The naval vessels managed to withstand the blast for the most part, but many were destroyed during Test Baker on July 25th. In the coming year, some 20 additional bomb tests would be conducted before the United States government officially returned control of the island over to the original natives in 1969. The largest test, Castle Bravo, also proved to be a large radiation fallout disaster. Ashes from the explosion flew miles into the inhibited islands putting nuclear fallout into the public minds of many. Shortly after the announcement that the islands were safe, a group of native people left their makeshift home to return to Bikini Island, but were evacuated 10 years later after developing radiation poisoning from cesium-137. Some sources also state strontonium-90, a remnant of the radioactive fallout as of 2009, the island still remains uninhabitable and many of the displaced natives now reside in the Carolinas, the Marshall Islands, in the Western Pacific, and some of them live in California and Nevada. The island is a part of the group of the Altos in the Pacific Ocean named Marshall Islands, which occupy a geographically area called the Micronesia. The islands were founded by the civilized world in the 19, in the 1600s, particularly the Spanish and the Germans. The islands provided a source of vegetation oils. However, there were not significant contact between the islanders and the outside world because of its remote location. In the 1900s, Japan took control of the islands and as World War II approached, they began a military buildup there due to a strategic location. U.S. forces took control of the island in 1944, at which point the remaining Japanese soldiers committed suicide before they were captured. The U.S. military decided that the remote location of Bikini Alto would be an ideal testing grounds for the nuclear weapons, specifically their impact on Navy warships. The Bikinians were asked if they would be willing to temporarily leave their island so that the U.S. could begin testing atomic bombs, and they agreed. The islanders were transported to another island 125 miles away in, the, in which the pass had been considered uninhabitable because of the inadequate food sources there. The islanders were left with a supply of food meant to last several weeks, although it quickly became apparent that it would not be sufficient, and they began to starve. During this time, two atomic bombs were detonated near the Alto. Afterward, a Bikini and Elder traveled to the Alto with U.S. delegation to view the results. Nothing at the island looked visibly changed. During the next several years, the islanders were relocated to, from island to island to an attempt to find surroundings which would provide them with sustenance. None of the islands were able to provide enough food for the Bikinians as they remained near starvation, growing increasingly dependent on the military in order to remain fed. In 1954, under fear that the Soviets 
had already tested a hydrogen bomb, the U.S. government decided to test its own device. A date was selected and tested commenced despite knowledge that the weather conditions present would irradiate the inhabitants of most of the Marshall Islands. A hydrogen bomb was detonated in the northwest corner of the Bikini Alto without informing any of the people who would be subjected to the radiation ahead of time. Naval ships which were stationed 40 miles away to monitor the radiation were alarmed at the extremely high radiation levels and all the crew were sent below deck and the hatches were sealed. Millions of ton, tons of sand, coral, and plant life were sent high into the air by the blast. Three or four hours later, a snow-white ash began to fall on the inhabitants of the numerous islands. Soon, the radioactive dust formed a layer more than two inches deep, turning the water it fell upon yellow. Unaware of the danger, the Bikinian children began to play in the fallout. Soon, the parents began to see physical signs of exposure setting in, vomiting, diarrhea, hair loss. Two days later, the islanders were evacuated to a medical center for treatment. In 1957, the Bikinians signed an agreement with the U.S. government, turning over full rights to the Alto. The American agreement also stated that any future claims against the U.S. government for its use of the Alto and their relocation would have to be made against the Bikinian leaders instead of the U.S. government. In return, the Islanders were given $25,000 in cash and $300,000 in a trust fund, which yield an annual dividend of about $30 per person. The Bikinians made this agreement without any legal representation. In 1967, the U.S. government d decided that the island was radioactively safe and began to consider allowing the Bikinians to return. Several families moved back in 1972, and the number of people living on the island continued to increase. Further testing of the island and the people who were living on it was done in 1975, just three short years after their return. As a result of this testing, the island was deemed unsafe to live on, and the people who had been there were contaminated well beyond safe limits. Several years after the government decided this, the Bikinians were then relocated to a different island and a lawsuit was filed against the U.S. government. Currently, Bikini Island is habitable. However, none of the food produced on the island is edible due to radiation contaminations in the soil. The primary activity on the island is divers exploring wrecks and naval ships destroyed by the testing of the nuclear weapons. No, no one can actually live on the island for an extended period of time, but there is a resort there for divers as well. It is in my opinion that I think Japan is going to become an island much like this. They can't seem to stop the radiation in Japan, and there doesn't seem to be any resolution in sight. The radiation has now gotten into the tap water of Japan's water system. It is in the land, and it is now well engulfed into the ocean as well. The radiation levels just seem to increase daily, while most Americans and other people around the world go on with their daily lives, just not really caring about what's going on in Japan. This event in Japan is going to be a world-changing event. Soon or later, the people of the world will have to focus on this event, and there will have to be a resolution.